Have you been looking for a way to make plant-based meats at a fraction of the cost of what it takes in a store? And today on WTF, we are going to show you our plant-based meat that you can turn into a burger, meatballs, or even sausage. Whatever your recipe calls for, you can use this. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. If you're new to WTF, every week Scott and I cover unique ingredients, techniques, and new things in cooking. So be sure that make sure that you're going to subscribe and ring the bell and you get notified about what we come up with every single Tuesday. And this week we are incredibly excited because we've been working so hard on introducing a plant-based ground meat, burger, sausage, whatever you want to use it for because people have been just like calling in and emailing in and asking about how do you do it uh, ever since the, uh, I say the big people um, <laughs> made their ingredients known. So we're really excited because you know, Scott's come up with just an incredible recipe and technique for doing this that you can do in your own kitchen, your own restaurant, your own small business. Um, so we're going to just really jump into it and cover one, how do you do it, what special ingredients you need, and what you need to watch out for to make sure that you're going to get that perfect burger every single time. Mm -hmm. So Scott, take it away. All right, so we're gonna actually going to start in the demo because okay. we're going to do an entire demo today of making it and cooking it uh, within this probably 15 minute episode that we're going to have. Okay. So you can see how easy it's going to be at home for you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a lot of ideas and, and like you said, questions and, mm -hmm. and, and you know people asking how do they make their own and there was always a, uh, you know, a disconnect. People weren't able to do it. Yep. Why couldn't we do it? So we took our time and and tested about a hundred burgers, <laughs> yes. different you know recipes, mm -hmm. ratios, things like that, so that we made an awesome burger uh, that you can take. You can mold into whatever you want. If you want meatloaf, if you want sausage, if you want meatballs, you can take this burger and do what you want. You don't just have to have burgers itself. So okay. first, let's get into uh, the recipe, and we're actually talking about the ingredients probably a little bit with this. So the first one is our TVP. So this TVP is special to us and the reason why we went with this TVP is it gave us the most meaty texture. Mm -hmm. uh, there were TVPs that were a bit too soft, a bit too uh, mushy, a bit too flaky. There was also TVPs, mm -hmm. I mean we tried about a dozen. Yep. And the, some of the TVPs were colored, you know, we wanted to try and get a nice color on the outside. And this is the one that we found had the best meaty texture. Now this may not be like the one that you purchase at a store, uh, can our recipe work with those? Yes, but if you want like the true recipe, you're gonna have to use this TVP because this gives us that meaty chew that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, TVP stands for textured vegetable protein and textured, textured vegetable protein is a soy protein mm -hmm. uh, that is texturized that has that chew to it rather than like the softness of let's say uh, a tofu. Mm -hmm. So next we have our fava bean concentrate. So the fava bean protein concentrate is uh, not fava bean flour. Yes. So don't think you, you can just substitute this for fava bean flour. This has a very sticky kind of um, almost gluey texture, but not in a negative sense. It's going to hold that burger together. And it's also when it cooks, it creates that network to hold everything together. One big issue people were having that mm -hmm. they always you know, contacted, emailed me, why can't I get my TVP to stay together? Mm -hmm. There's two ingredients that do it. It's the fava bean concentrate, and it's also methacellulose. So methacellulose that we're using here is HV, which is high viscosity. We're using this because it thickens very well, and it also um, has a low gelling temp. So as you cook it, it's gonna firm up just a little bit, but it's not gonna be like a bounciness. We don't want our burgers to be bouncy. Mm -hmm. We wanna have that perfect bite through. We wanna be able to cut them. There should be like a slight crumbliness because we did test regular burgers against this just to see as we you know, cut through our plant-based burger, is it gonna fall apart the same way? And if it falls apart that same way, it's gonna chew the same way. Okay. Right, so we have that. Then we have what makes it look like um, meat. We have some beet powder. And this is a specific beet powder that we found. Um, we'll actually probably put up the brand because this beet powder is lower in sugar. You wanna find a beet powder uh, that is lower in sugar. There is a fermented beet powder 
And like I said, we did a lot of testing, so we tested a lot of different ones. Mm -hmm. There's a fermented beet powder that we tried, but the color was completely off, too dark. This is a um, non-fermented beet powder that has a low sugar content. If it has the high sugar content, it tends to make a sweet burger, mm -hmm. and I don't really like sweet burgers. I liked it, but I was totally overruled, so <laughs> it was the low sugar version. <laughs> so on top of that, since there is a bit of sugar in there, we actually use cocoa powder, and the bitterness of the cocoa powder doesn't make this taste chocolatey at all. It actually makes you know, a little bit of richness to it, and it cuts that sugar, that sweetness. Mm -hmm. We have some porcini powder. If you can find dried porcinis, use dried porcinis and just grind them up. Or if you could find porcini powder, use that. We have some ground thyme, and the thyme gives it a real savoriness to it. Mm -hmm. And we went with some white pepper. And the reason why we use white pepper, and white pepper has like a bit of barnyardiness, like almost richness to it that we wanted to use. And you don't get the, uh, the specks of black pepper. Mm -hmm. We have some garlic powder, right? We're just stacking on the umami flavors right here. Yep. Some onion powder, some nutritional yeast flakes, and then some white vinegar powder, which is also ours, you can find it in the links below or modernistpantry.com. Mm -hmm. So that's our dry mix here. So very simple. We have our dry mix here. You just mix it up very lightly. It's that simple, super easy. And it doesn't look like much now. So the next thing that we have to do is we have water and amino acids and just a little bit of liquid smoke, right? We're just trying to stack on those savory flavors. With this, this isn't like a salted finished burger. Mm -hmm. We want this to just taste like ground meat. And then we can take that ground meat and we can salt the outside of it. We can do whatever we need to do with it. Uh, if we're making meatballs, we can add seasoning to it and not have to worry about it being overly salty. Right. So there is a little bit of salt in this, but it's not going to taste salty itself. So the amino acids are similar to a soy sauce, but it's a soy free version. Mm -hmm. And we find that they don't have much of a soy flavor or anything like that. It just tastes kind of like richness. So we have that, a little bit of liquid smoke and water. Very simply, I just got poured in. And as I mix it up, you're going to see it start to turn red. Make sure I mix well. Get that beet powder mixed in. So as we do this, I also had to make a type of fat. We call it our marbling fat. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is turning that nice kind of meat color. Yep. Right? So this is, this is just to give it the look. We wanted it to, as you cut it, you get those you know, spots of like, you know, uh, kind of bloodiness, but you know, juiciness, mm -hmm. but also mixed in with the fat. There's no fat in this, right? Right now you could cook this, but there's no fat. We're not getting that real rich kind of uh, juiciness that you would get. So what I did is I took water and I emulsified it with some more of the methacellulose HV. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry, I mixed it with the uh, methacellulose. And then I emulsified in some of our melted purified coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Our purified coconut oil doesn't have coconut flavor. Yep. So you're not getting, you know, coconut burgers here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. So what I did, you can check it out on our Instagram. We have a full video showing you how to make this recipe. The recipe is in the description below. Yes. So what I did is I, I make this emulsion, I freeze it, and then mm -hmm. I scrape it with a fork. So I get these little bits of white fat. And there's a little bit of chunks in there too, which is good because that'll like a, have a little pocket of fattiness to the burger when we make yeah. it. So you want it to be kind of throughout the yes. mixture. Yeah, and this we just want to barely fold in. Mm -hmm. Some of it's going to melt into the burger. Some of it's going to stay white and you know uh, have those little spots. Mm -hmm. But we're going to end up with a great looking burger. Yeah. And Scott, what I really love that you did with this is that you were very um, mindful about calculating how much fat content you, it is, right? So yes. it ended up being, what, 20%? So it's about 20%, yeah. yeah. So it's like an 80-20 burger, if mm. you're familiar with that. So very simple. We have those little you know, spots of white. We have our ground meat kind of texture. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to be able to do, and if we did this right, it only took about a few minutes to allow yep. that uh, TVP to fully hydrate. Mm -hmm. And I have my pin ready to go. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in there. Make sure that it is evenly coating. Give this just a minute to um, fully heat up. So that way the sear is proper. And this only takes about a minute and a half per side. Okay. Very fast. 
Uh, and as we were testing this, we were really mindful just because we have kind of chef mind is like raw versus ready to eat. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is completely ready to eat because right. it's not actually raw meat, but right. it just looking at it makes us, you know, immediately feel mm -hmm. like, oh no, this is raw. I have to keep this away from everything because it looks so real. Yeah. And uh, which brings up a good point, right? So people uh, who I'm sure are already like dying to purchase everything and make this themselves. Um, when, you know, if I make a batch, if I want to do like a pound, if I want to do like two, five pounds, how, mu how long can I keep this mixture in the fridge? So in the fridge, I would suggest keeping it uh, for about a week. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to cook it, seven days obviously is the same, but mm -hmm. if you wanted to freeze it, make it into patties and freeze it over a month easily. Okay. Just because it is, you know, protein, fat, moisture, that is a, you know, a safe haven for foodborne illness. So. Um, just have it and you can cook it within a week or you can, like I said, freeze and keep it for months on end. As long as if you, vac uh, if you vacuum seal it, I can't mm. speak, uh, <laughs> you can exciting. definitely keep it for you know longer periods of time, mm -hmm. let's say something like the meatballs, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna get this into the pan. So this recipe makes one pound. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make it so we could show like, okay, this is one pound of meat. And if you were to purchase one pound of meat from uh, a different supplier, let's say just like a big name brand, right? And you can see how easy it was for me to lift that and patty it up so mm -hmm. it looks like a nice burger. I'm just gonna coat the bottom of the pan and place it down and just give it a press so it has like even distribution. I can get rid of my gloves now. Yeah, and you can kind of see that that patty is not falling apart in any way. No. It's not crumbling. It's also not like seizing up or anything. So yeah, it doesn't bow like mm -hmm. a traditional burger. So when, once I press it down, it's going to sit there. And it's going to have a nice even uh, crust on the bottom, and the same with the top. So I'm just going to keep it for about you know a minute and a half, and then we'll be able to uh, flip it over. Um, like I said before, I wanted to make this, and then I wanted it to be a easily adaptable into any recipe that contains meat. Mm -hmm. So what we did yesterday, actually, um, we had been planning and planning, and we got our meat properly, uh, you know, seasoned and textured. Then we took it and we just wanted to test it right against the recipe. So mm -hmm. I tested it against a, uh, a meatball recipe. So the meatball recipe has uh, breadcrumbs, basil, oregano, um, you know, chili flake, so there's no egg in it because you don't need a binder mm -hmm. in it. So I did took out the egg, uh, and if you are plant-based, then you don't need the egg anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to make these meatballs that we are super proud of. They have this perfectly uh, delicate texture of like an Italian meatball. They hold up in the sauce, so I was able to bake them off and then put them into the sauce, and they're not just completely falling apart into nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jane, if you wanted to try one, the, the ones yes. up front, just get, you know, slice it right in half and kind of show the viewer exactly how good they look. Will do. You can move the basil. I know. Get, get out of here, basil. I don't want to eat you. There we go. So you can kind of see it's definitely like it has exactly the same texture as a meat meatball. Yeah. So I'll just give it a turn so we can see. Right. It looks mm -hmm. like it. And as it cooks, it has almost that gradient too, which we can see here. This is our mm. cooked burger versus, uh, let's say, the leading name brand burger. Now you get and in a grocery store? Yeah, you mm -hmm. can see right here we have that perfect, uh, you know, this was cooked a little bit right before we went on the air here in YouTube land. And you can just see, you know, the gradient is a little bit browner at the top and through the middle it's red. But this one is almost the same color all the way through. Mm -hmm. Plus, whenever I get the frozen ones, I notice that they're, they're they only come frozen. This mm -hmm. one you can absolutely keep in the refrigerator, you know, for that seven days and have it ready to go whenever you need it. Yeah. So and I'm it just really just tastes better because we have like taste tested against like all the other burgers yeah. out there. And ours just like, it just has like a real meatiness and juiciness. I think as part of that, is, I think it must have to do with the fat content because like it really like has such a nice feel when you eat it. Yes, and, and the fat that we use melts at around the same temperature as like a beef tallow would. Mm -hmm. So as you cook it and you just barely cook it through, it's just going, just barely going to start melting. So when you bite into it, you get that juiciness. Obviously these two right here, like I said, were cooked about 10 minutes before we started filming. So they, you know, they've you know, started to cool off a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this one, as we cook it, we can break it open and we can absolutely see just how juicy it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. And I think one thing we also talked about, you know, when we started doing the research was, I, at least I personally was very surprised by how expensive 
uh, plant based yeah. patties were in the grocery store, you're paying like 20, 15, 25 dollars a pound for something like this. Yeah, which so is, it depends ooh, on. There's a little bit of splatter. So you can see, yeah, <laughs> there's definitely the some juiciness going on yeah. over here when I pressed it. So it's, it was ridiculous. I was like, well, you're, you end up paying so much for, for a burger that you're cooking at home. Whereas I think when we did ours, one of the things that were that was really key is that we wanted to make sure that it's going to be affordable for someone to do it at home, to do it in their restaurant, to do yeah. it in their catering business, so that it becomes, um, you know, not an obstacle to get into the plant-based burger, making it at home. Yeah, and, and as you saw, the, uh, if you are, let's say, making it in a restaurant, the labor on this is... 20 minutes total that you're paying someone to put this together and if you make you know 20 pounds of it you're going to have that for a long time mm -hmm. uh and it's not going to spoil it's not going to go rancid if you keep it frozen it's not going to you know completely uh freeze or burn out mm -hmm. like um some things will but you're going to be able to do this very easily there isn't a lot of you know it seems very scientific it seems almost out of reach when you see oh the uh you know the leading brands burgers like wow, I can only get this this way. Mm -hmm. We found a way you can absolutely do it without having to worry about all that labor and not have to pay $15 a pound. You actually pay about a third of that yeah. to make it yourself. Yep, and that's not, you know, I think we try costing it out just based on whatever you can find in grocery stores, plus just the ingredients that we have here that we feel like really make a difference in the burger. Yep. So it does end up being um, like a little under 550 a pound for meat, which is like if you're getting good ground meat, you're paying more than that anyway for yeah. like beef, right? Yeah, a, a so. basic ground beef right now, like the lower end quality is going to be about 370, whereas this is 550, you're getting higher quality and you're you know opening up your customer base. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's a really good thing. And actually, if you want to hand me that spoon right there, Jamie, I we're will. gonna cut this here one in go. half. So we have a burger set up here, mm -hmm. but I just want to show you and I will sacrifice my hands for the, the viewer. Just Chef if hands. I, if I pull this up right now, you can see just how juicy it is. I can give it a squeeze. You can see that fat and juice mm -hmm. coming out of it, right? It is very hot, I'll let you know. <laughs> but the juiciness of it, it has that chew, that texture mm -hmm. that you look for in a burger, and it holds up. So I was able to flip it. I was able to put it on the burger. You can cut it just like this one and you can see it's not going to completely fall apart it holds together so well mm -hmm. um, and we're just extremely proud of it so yeah. we want you to try it and see how well you like it yeah so uh, and i'm should i eat like a bite of this one not the one you just squeeze with your hands yeah, yeah. You okay. <laughs> take a bite of that all right one. i'll do this one um but while we're doing that i think maybe we just want to spend a little bit more time talking about the ingredients because i think you know Nowadays, when, when you see like, okay, you have TVP, I have TVP, and you talked about that in the coconut oil and the fava bean concentrate um, and the HV, can you maybe just spend a little bit more time recapping like why, why we sort, well, like why do we spend the time to source these particular ones instead of just buying from the grocery store? So we wanted to look for the ingredients that made this have the best texture for a Gosh, burger, sorry. right? We wanted it to feel, look, and taste like a uh, you know ground meat so uh, the textured vegetable protein that we have has that chew th that we're looking for the uh the fava bean protein gives us that you know that building network that we can get uh, a little bit of bounce to the bite a little bit of you know firmness on the chew um but it's not grainy it's not gritty it's not flour right and then we went with the methicellulose to just you know a helping hand to hold it together uh, and as we cook it, it'll firm up, it'll keep those outsides, you know, nice. You can see right here, nothing's fallen off the outside. It's almost completely set. And that's the methicellulose working as well as the methicellulose working in the fat to hold that fat uh, within the burger. And one thing I didn't mess it, uh, mention mm -hmm. is that as you cook it, the methicellulose, uh, I did mention that it gels, but when it's in there with the fat, it's going to hold on to that fat, mm -hmm. right? So the fat doesn't completely leak out into the pan. So it's going to hold on to that fat. And then as you eat it, the methicellulose, methicellulose I said methicellulose mm -hmm. like 15 times and now it's not working. The methicellulose will return to a liquid, hence the, the fat will return to a liquid as well. And then it'll just stay juicy. Yeah. And, you know, especially methicel, we have a whole WTF about methicel yes. that you could watch and you can get that in the description below. But, you know, at least in our store, we're carrying like, like around 10 different types of methicel. And sometimes people don't realize that they're different. And yep. you think, you know, they're all interchangeable. I'll just grab the first one that I see. And uh, you really can't do that. It's not going to work this exact same way. So you want to make sure you're getting the HV. 
Mm -hmm. And then the same thing for the fava bean protein concentrate. Um, you know, one of the reasons we source this one is that not only does it have that extra binding power that you talked about, it's also flavorless. So if you, you know, it's, it's great to like have your burger, but you don't want that unnecessary flavor in there, right? Like you don't want it to taste like fava beans and you don't want yes. it to taste like coconut. So like especially um, one of the things that we look for is to make sure that our ingredients are flavor neutral. And mm -hmm. that is very, very important if you want your burger to, to taste like a burger. Um, let's see, what is that? I know you made one more thing. Do we just want to show it off before we uh, sign off? Sure, so like we said before, you, you can take the, the, the meat and you can do whatever you want with it. And we made a breakfast sandwich over here. And this Yay. breakfast sandwich actually uses our uh, eggs, E-G-G-Z, Eggs Essential, uh, Chef made by Sky. Chef Sky. Mm -hmm. And um, we have our vegan cheese uh, on here as well as mm -hmm. the burger itself. And uh, there's actually a vegan Parmesan uh, on the... Um, the meatballs over there but yeah we just made like a we took our burger and then we made it into a sausage and then we have our eggs so this is a completely you know uh, plant-based breakfast sandwich that you can make mm -hmm. and gives you all the textures and taste that you want from a uh, breakfast sandwich yeah so we don't right now have the recipe up for the sausage and the meatball so it's just a burger but if you're like so you can certainly make your own but if you do want these particular recipes, just um, leave your comments below. Let us know that you want them, and we can certainly put them up for you. So anything else you want to leave folks with today? No, I think we uh, pretty much nailed it. But we want you guys to try. We want you guys mm -hmm. to make these, uh, you know, this vegan meat or this plant-based meat, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, we want you to make this and then adapt it to the recipes that you want. Uh, show us what you can do, because we've done quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But we want to see how much more can be done with this. Uh, and it's a lot more feasible to do it at home now rather than paying, you know, sometimes upwards of $200 for a five pound brick. So, mm -hmm. so try this at home and you can absolutely, uh, you know, send us pictures, send us emails, anything you want. If you need help with this recipe, you can do that as well. And it comes right to me and I will help you. All right. Well, I, hopefully you're as excited about what you've seen today as we are, because we are incredibly excited and we've eaten so many of these burgers and we love them. Um, so we hope you love them too. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. Mm -hmm.